Glad to have you. Uh, I want to start with, <laughs> with something that we didn't know about when this broadcast started, but it is my understanding that just a few minutes ago, the Romney campaign bought time uh, on Face the Nation during one of our commercial blocks and in some other uh, markets around the country, running a new ad uh, which includes me. I. <laughs> I am running this uh, not to give uh, circulation to it, but just to state <laughs> that obviously I have no connection with the Romney campaign. This was done uh, without our permission. Uh, it comes as a uh, total surprise to me, and uh, and that is that. But uh, that is uh, that's where we are in politics. Uh, Frank Rich, <laughs> uh, I hope you get residuals. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll get some blowback. I'll tell you that for sure. Uh, uh, Frank Rich, uh, glad to have you on the broadcast. Thanks for uh, having me. How big a deal is this Bain Capital stuff? Is this uh, election still about the economy, or is this the questions that the Obama campaign's raising about uh, uh, Mitt Romney and Bain Capital and when he left and so forth? Is that is that a big deal? I think there are two things going on. Obviously, the economy um, is very important to the election, and for reasons your previous panelists just said. But the problem for Romney is a lot of Americans don't really know him. They don't really know his biography, and Bain is the biggest part of it. It's what he's running on as a sort of Mr. Fix-It. Uh, he was obviously governor of Massachusetts, but he doesn't really want to talk about that because of Obamacare being inspired by his own health care plan. Uh, the Olympics is uh, small potatoes, so what, is he, what has he got to run on? It, this. and so. Of course, it's going to keep going. And what's shocking, I think, is not the individual answers to any particular questions, but the fact that this was first brought up in a, a very tough campaign in 1994 uh, against Ted Kennedy in Massachusetts. And some of the ads that are being run now are sort of similar to the ads then. And it's almost two decades later, and he can't answer these questions. You know, I think if you took his interviews uh, over the past couple of days that he did with all the networks to explain why he was CEO, but he wasn't really at Bain, that uh, he got a six-figure income, but there was, it was a different entity. I think that's a character issue. It goes beyond the out specific outsourcing questions or any of that. People don't know what, what he's talking about or who he is. All right. Uh, Michael Gerson, uh, you wrote speeches for George Bush before you mm -hmm. became, I must say, a very influential columnist at the Washington Post. What Thanks. do you make of this? Uh, in some ways, it seems like uh, the Romney campaign was a little slow out of the gate in, in responding uh, to these allegations. Well, they may have been taken aback. This was a genuine innovation, which is to accuse uh, a presidential candidate of the possibility of committing a felon. I've been involved in three presidential campaigns. That's actually not politics as usual. Um, I think it's a serious uh, challenge. This is a, a campaign, that, uh, an Obama campaign, that tends to not just criticize, but to vilify. This week, they were really a combination of Huey Long and Michael Corleone. Um, this is a, you know, and I think that the Romney have campaign has had a tough time responding to this. Does it work? Um, I don't think it changes the fundamental dynamic of the campaign, which is both stable and very close. Um, but it certainly changed the narrative and dialogue this week away from a very bad jobs report. John Dickerson, sum it up for us. Well, you know, as Frank said, the, the Romney's argument is I'm a fix-it man. The Obama argument is maybe, but he uses bad parts. And that's the argument at the center of this was when he was at Bain, he was an outsourcer. Well, the Obama campaign still hasn't proved that any decision Mitt Romney made led to outsourcing. But they've tied him down for several days on this question. Any day the conversation is about outsourcing is a day Mitt Romney loses. And the ad you started uh, this segment talking about is their response, which is, isn't this disappointing for the candidate of hope and change? Now, will people care about the niceties of politics? Maybe not. But what they're trying to tie that to is, aren't these attacks disappointment? And doesn't that match your larger disappointment with this president? The question one advisor said to me is not, are you better off, but did you think you'd be better off? And if you don't think so, aren't you disappointed in Barack Obama? You know, and that's where they're trying to get. Uh, if, not to dwell on this, but uh, you're talking about that ad that they put me in. I, yeah. I, you know, that was a question that I posed to David Axelrod, the uh, president's campaign manager. I wasn't stating something there. I, I was sure. asking somebody else a question. But uh, Nora, do, uh, uh, do the Obama people think this is working? 
They do. They do think it's working, and they heavily tested this new ad, the, the Firms that's out, which is the music playing that you played at the top of the show, and they say it works. This is not just an effort to uh, disqualify Mitt Romney. This is an effort to destroy him early on in this campaign. The Obama campaign has spent $100 million in advertising so far. $25 million of that was positive ads. About another $25 million was comparative ads. I mean, comparative, negative, you can call it what you want. But a majority of $50 million plus has been spent on this Bain message. So they are trying to, they've got, they, you know, if this were the early rounds of a boxing match, you know, Romney is on the ropes and Obama's throwing all the punches. And anytime, even as Romney says, you're defending yourself, you're losing. And so instead of, you know, the economy in the last couple of weeks has been serving up some softballs. I mean, Mitt Romney's not even at the plate. I mean, he's, you know, you've got uh, the third straight lackluster jobs report. You've got the CBO this week saying that for the fourth straight year, we're going to have trillion dollar deficits. And the Romney campaign's not talking about that. The Romney campaign is largely putting out ads with you in them, responding on these Bain attacks. And so they've lost the messaging in these past couple of weeks. Uh, uh, Frank Rich, uh, does President Obama have to do more than that, though? I mean, can he win uh, just by uh, trying to make it a referendum on Mitt Romney, while the Romney people, of course, are trying to make it a referendum on Barack Obama. I, I keep looking for both of them to come up with some more things about what they, they are going to do, not what's wrong with the other guy. Is that, am I just a uh, hopeless romantic? Bob, Bob, you may have to make another ad pleading for that. <laughs> <laughs> but if, no, obviously both candidates have to step forward with, with, with a positive program and presumably will and it will coalesce around their acceptance speeches. But just to go back a second uh, to uh, Michael Gerson's uh, characterizing what uh, uh, is being done by the president as Michael Corleone tactics, it's exactly the tactics his former boss used or people around him in swift boating John Kerry. So this is nothing new. And for all the talk about Obama and hope and change, uh, in the last campaign, the truth is he ran negative ads then. Remember that one where he presented sort of a doddering John McCain not knowing how many houses he had? Uh, so it's not as if he ran as a Mother Teresa entirely in 2008. You have to mix it up. Right. Well, yeah. I, well I, do, I do remember the inaugural address, uh, Obama's inaugural address, where he said we need to lay aside childish things. This now seems like a campaign run by a nasty 13-year-old. Um, this is a very, very different from, uh, you know, it's the kind of thing that gets snickers in a campaign war room. But I think there could be a reaction against this in the well, American public. This, you know, I don't think there are a lot of Americans out there saying, you know what American politics really needs? It needs more juvenile viciousness. Yeah, but, oh, this, isn't, but Michael, right this isn't Little League. You know Both what? sides play, Our play clock tough. Yeah. Has, yeah. But, but has Mitt, the, Mitt Romney's the gong has yeah. rung here. I'm terribly sorry.